Hi guys, welcome back. So today I am here with a recommendation video for you. Latin American Heritage Month starts in the US September 15th and runs into October. And a friend of mine, Jocelyn from Yogi at the Book, is hosting a readathon to celebrate. I am planning on trying to slip at least one book into my TBR during the readathon to participate, but I thought I would come in here and give you guys some recommendations of YA books by Latinx authors that you could pick up for the readathon or just to celebrate Latin American Heritage Month. If you are interested in the readathon portion of this, I will link her channel in the video description down below with all of the information. The readathon is going to be taking place from September 22nd to September 25th, and like I said, I'm not going to be able to complete all of the challenges. I will give you a rundown of what those are, but I am going to try to at least read one book by a Latin American author during that time. However, I have some really great recommendations for you today. So today I'm going to be recommending eight YA books by Latin American authors. A lot of these books will also meet some of the challenges if you are participating in the readathon, just to give you an idea of what the challenges for this one are. I will let you know which of these books meet some of the challenges. I don't, I don't think I have anything from a non -sp oh no, you know what I do. I also have, because there's another one from, to read a book from a non-Spanish speaking Latin American country, and I think I actually do have one for this as well. So anyway, let's get into the books, and uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy. My first recommendation for you is kind of a crossover between middle grade and YA. It's a book I read this year and I really loved. This is Miles Morales' Spider-Man by Jason Reynolds. This meets the challenge of reading a book by a Afro-Latinx author. In general, what I've read of Jason Reynolds I've really loved. This in particular is fantastic. If you have any interest in Spider-Man or superheroes, definitely pick it up. I was so pleasantly surprised by this. I didn't go in with very high expectations, but it's fun and the main character, Miles Morales, is a total sweetheart and this like nerdy black kid from Brooklyn, but it also gets into some really real issues, wealth inequality, mass incarceration, and the racial pieces of that. So anyway, I highly recommend this. This is my first recommendation for you, Miles Morales' Spider-Man by Jason Reynolds. My next recommendation is a book by a booktube darling. This is They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. He is a queer Latinx author and he writes about queer characters, so this will meet that challenge. They Both Die at the End is speculative fiction set in a world where people get a phone call letting them know that they will be dying within 24 hours so that they can have their final day and it is about two boys who spend their last day together. This was one I really enjoyed. I know he is a much loved author. He does have other books as well, but this is the only one of his that I've read. My next recommendation will meet the challenge of reading by an author from a non-Spanish speaking country. And for this, I am including Caribbean authors. This is American Street by Ebe's Boy. She is originally from Haiti, which is a French speaking country, so this would work. I love her books. She has, she also has another book coming out in September that if you pick it up would work for this readathon called Pride. Pride is um, actually, you know what, let me just grab that because I have an arc of it. Okay, so I'm just gonna recommend both of her books because I love both of them. So this one is coming out later this month. Like I said, this is Pride. It is a Pride and Prejudice retelling that is about gentrification and class prejudice set in Brooklyn and I loved it. This was a five-star read for me. I am buying a hardcover copy and I'm very excited about it. And then her first book which came out last year is American Street. I also really loved this. Both of her books have some magical realism in them. American Street is about a teen girl who is emigrating from Haiti to Detroit and kind of about the issues that she faces there. It's about identity, it is about race, it's about poverty. Um, it has just so many things woven into it and I really really loved it. So yeah, um, Evie's a Boy is a great pick for that challenge and I would recommend either one of her books. Another option if you want to read a book that is both by a queer Latinx author and featuring a queer Latinx main character, you could read Anger is a Gift by Marco Shiro. I really loved this book. It is sometimes a bit hard to read. It has been a little bit controversial, but I am a huge fan. It's a debut novel. It is about a gay teen boy living in Oakland and dealing with institutionalized racism and police violence and also falling in love for the first time. So um, I loved it. 
I am a huge fan of this book. I know this has not been everybody's cup of tea. It does take things a little bit far, but I think it makes some really important points and I think it's worth picking up. Another option for a book that you could read that is by a Afro-Latinx author and also features a Afro-Latinx main character is The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. This book is absolutely stunning. I loved it. It is a book written in verse and it's very much a coming of age novel about a teen girl who is is wrestling with her identity and wrestling with her parents faith and it's just beautifully written I highly recommend this one it's also a really quick read because like I said it is written in verse so it's pretty quick to get through but it is just a beautiful book and the cover is gorgeous as well oh great I forgot actually this one also reading a book that features more than one language because there is Spanish in this book as well most of it is in English but there are chunks of it that are in Spanish so yeah that would also meet that challenge the next book that I have to recommend to you is not one that I actually own I have passed along the copies I have but I do highly recommend them it is Labyrinth Lost and the sequel Bruja Born by Zaretta Cordova I will put a picture right here so that you guys can see what I'm talking about these are fantastic YA books about family and finding yourself and magic and it follows three sisters who are born into a family of Latinx witches or brujas and um, yeah they're just fantastic I really love both of them they're really solid picks for YA and the great thing about these books is there are ones that I think would be appropriate for younger teenagers which is not always something that you get so those are a really good option as well my next recommendation for you is Shadow House Fall by Daniel Jose Older. This is actually the second book in the series, so I love both of them. You probably want to read book one first. Shadow Shaper is the first book. This is book two. These are just really fantastic. This is YA urban fantasy set in Brooklyn, and we have this female protagonist who is just amazing and it deals with some really real issues it's full of adventure and magic and I love the world and the way he integrates community into the magic system in general I just really like him I think he's a wonderful author and my final recommendation for you is by an author that I'm hoping to actually pick up myself during this readathon and this is the only book that I have not actually read but I've heard wonderful things about this is when the moon was ours by Anna Marie McLemore I also believe this features a queer character I'm not sure because I have not read it yet but I really Really want to it's just beautiful and I've heard wonderful things she writes a lot of great magical realism um so I might pick this one up I haven't read it yet I also have an arc of a book by her that's coming out in October Blanca Iroha and this is a retelling of Swan Lake so yeah these are the two possibilities I have I have not read any novels by her I have however read a couple of short stories by her which I loved I really like her writing so if you like magical realism these are a really good option Alright, so there you go. Those are all of the recommendations that I have for you for YA books that you could read during National Hispanic Heritage Month and for the Latinx Readathon. So talk to me in the comments down below and let me know if you guys have read any of these, any of your opinions, and if you have other recommendations of great books that are options for this. I hope that you guys pick these up. I think it's a great way to get a little bit more diversity into your reading in lots of different ways. And definitely go check out the Readathon. Like I said, I will link it in the video description down below. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.